Hello fellow mutants, welcome back to another video, hope you're having a wonderful day. And in this video, I am going to do my personal rank of the Nitzerum films. Um, and this is what, and this is specifically like, in what order do the Nitzerum movies speak out to me the most? Like, to like, what does really speak out to me? So, um... Some of them you guys might agree with. Some of them you might agree with. Like in terms of what being the best to the worst. Whatever. And I'm going to start from the best. And work my way down to what. And what I believe is like. The best to the worst. If that makes sense. And my first. The first two on my list is kind of like. The most quote unquote debatable. Because they can be easily like flipped over. Um, but for me, the number one, uh, the first, that goes in first place for me, is my personal favorite Ninja Turtle film. I acknowledge this ain't the best Ninja Turtle film, but it's definitely my favorite. And that's Secret of the Ooze. Secret of the Ooze is on there. Um... The acting is good, the costumes is good, the set is good. Uh, the reason why it lands on my um, first place spot for me in this case, in this scenario, is because... And you guys are going to cringe at me, I swear to God. <laughs> but it's because um the whole Ninja Rap. <laughs> the go Ninja, go Ninja, go! Go Ninja, go Ninja, go! Go, go, go! Go, ninja, ninja, rap, ninja, ninja, rap, rap. They're all in the eyes doing this dance, and the turtles doing that dance. That's what sold it for me. That's what sold it for me. <laughs> I like said, I acknowledge that's not the best Ninja Turtle film, but it's, that's definitely amongst the best of the Ninja Turtle film. And I've heard the whole like dance scene for the sake of the ooze. They put a lot of the, um, um, budget into that scene. Which is kind of surprised to me, but okay. But, um, yeah, Secret of the Ooze, I think, is, uh, is number one on my charts because of the whole Ninja Rap dance. Number two, which I would acknowledge is the best Ninja Turtle film. The original movie that came out in 1990. I so, oh, so love it. Going back to the Secret of the Ooze real quick. What I like about Secret of the Ooze the most, um, outside of the Ninja Rap dance, is the fact that, um, they get to, they explore their origins a little bit more in terms of where the Ooze was coming from, how that's being distributed, and how they have to essentially, like, kind of like with the first one, have to deal with the past, but, um, the ooze be more, like, I guess, like, more personal for the Turtles alone than it was for Splinter, right? Where the first one was, Splinter was able to, like, Splinter kind of dealt with part of his past a little bit. Because the Shredder, um, killed, um... Splinter's master, Machiyoshi. And so, like, seeing that whole, like, duel, if you can't even call it that, between Shredder and Splinter, and how, like, the Shredder calls himself to, like, what we thought dead, died, um, kind of like, like, a, oh yeah moment, right? But what I like about, um, see, uh, the original, uh, initial film, is that the fact that um, Splinter says, I'm not going to always be here for you. At some point, you're going to have to live your life without me. And at first, the turtles, I kind of felt like, it was like, the turtles saying, okay, dad, whatever, you're just saying that, it's just careless. But when the foot takes Splinter away, and that actually happens, we see, like, the turtles actually, like, I feel like, 
um, Raphael definitely is, takes it somewhat hard, right? Lena you know, always taking it hard. Um, there's this even scene where, like, you hear Raphael yelling, but it's really Michael Anslow. And there was this deleted scene where, like, I think Mike Ganslow was, like, beating something up. But I forget if that was listed in the movie. Maybe I'm confusing it with, like, April, like, tr sketching Mike Ganslow. I think that's the part I'm confusing the deleted scene with. Where, my, um, April was sketching Mike Ganslow and explaining how Mike Ganslow has been taking the disappearance of, um, um, of the Spitcher hard. Um... I do how I do love how like Leo and Raph gets into the argument where Raph Leo says, "Yeah, go away. We don't need you." And then as soon as like Raphael gets knocked out and he comes to, we see this beautiful um moment between Leo and Raph where Leo says, "What I said before about not needing you, we do. I I miss you and I love you essentially." You know, all of that wasn't spoken in words. You could kind of feel that was what, like, Leonardo was getting at. Like, I appreciate you. I love you. Even though you get on my nerves. Sometimes I love you and I appreciate you, Raph. And we could, like, you could tell, like, Raph also has the same appreciation for Leonardo as well. After, like, they, the last thing they did was fight. As a, someone who has a brother and a sister, both can't get on my nerves a lot. <laughs> That scene specifically spoke out to me. And as well as the campfire scene. When the turtles are meditating and Splinter um, comes up and essentially tells his, son, his sons that I'm, I love you. That... That is a lot. Like, that, that is... That always been, like, a very special um, moment for me. Like, I... Because first, I always put myself in, like, what would happen to me if, um, like, how would I react to, like, if my parents were taken, right? Um, granted, I'm not as close to them as I would like to be, sir. But, like, if my, like, for some reason, like, my parents got taken, right? Kidnapped. And if I saw a record, or, or is has passed on. And if I saw a recording of some kind of them saying that they love me, how would I react to that? I I can imagine myself like appreciating that, um, just hearing that, um, I'd probably be like uh, Michael Angelo in that scene where I'll be crying a little bit. Not like out of sadness, really, but like, whoa, they actually said they love me and they proud of me. That means a lot. Kind of like Tears of Joy, if that makes sense. Like, if that makes sense. Anyways. The next one, which is kind of a loose sequel to the uh, 90s trilogy. And that's the 2007 intro film. I would have put that like either second or first. But Seek of the Ooze and the original Nintendo movie are just so good that both both the original movie and the Seek of the Ooze definitely deserves the first and second place, uh, place spot for me. Uh, the reason why the 07 movie is in third is one, I kind of have a like uh, a soft spot for the movie because um, it's the first Nintendo movie I was able to see in theaters. James Arnold Taylor is Leonardo in that film, which he's my favorite force actor. But also, um, I think the CGI are good, the voice acting is good, the story is good. Um, it doesn't use the shredder as a villain. Um, it references the shredder a little bit, but it also like has like someone else who appears to be like power hungry. Um, just, like, at first, he's definitely kind of power hungry. But over the years, we see that it kind of made him more human. And in the current timeline, per se, 
we see that the guy who may still appear to be power hungry just wants to put things right, right? But Stone Generals doesn't want to. So I was like, really, the the Stone Generals are the bad guys of the family. Winters, sure, he was a bad guy, but he had a change of heart. Um, um, and I do enjoy as I plug my laptop in, because I also realize that's almost dead. But um. I I don't know, I do enjoy what I also like about um I think what I liked about the um 07 movie a lot outside of being the first in the movie I've seen theaters was the fact that the family's kind of disjointed at this point because Leonardo t- took like a year or two off away from the turtles and his family. Now that he's coming back, the uh, like we see some resentment towards Raphael. And like Raphael's kinda like hurt, even though he's too tough to admit it. Hurt that Leonardo like went away for as long as he did. So I do like how like there's this tension between Raph and Leo and how they got into a fight fight. Um and how like even though, like, Raph and Leo are tends to, like, class heads, Raphael loves his brother so very much that he, when the Stone Generals kidnaps Leonardo, Raphael, along with his brothers, father, and April and Casey, and the foot, essentially, with Cry leading them, rescues, not only rescues Leonardo, but saves the world. And I do like how, like, in the sequel of the Ooze, Raphael gets kidnapped, where the other turtles have to, like, save Raphael. And in the TNT film, that came out in 2007, it's kind of like vice versa, where Leonardo is kid- the one kidnapped, and it's Raphael with his family and fr- the two human friends has to go rescue, um... Leonardo. So I do like those two parallels. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, number four for me is Batman versus the Ninja Turtles. I thought that was cool. Um, I do have a comic book for uh of Batman versus the Ninja Turtles where like in that comic book is uh Gotham and the New York. Uh, Batman's in a different universe than the Turtles, and the Turtles have to get back to their own time. Um, otherwise, um, their own universe. Otherwise, if they stay in Batman's universe, uh, the Turtles and Splinter will be going back to their um, Turtle status rat phase. Like, be ordinary rat and Turtles. And this one, I do like how, like, they're in the same universe. Um, and how the Turtles and Batman teams up to f- fight both the Shredder, the Foot Clan, Ray Al Ghul, and the League of Assassins. And I do really like the part um, in the movie where the Turtles and um, Batman, uh, Team Batman... Team Batman consisting of Batgirl and um, Tim Drake, not Tim Drake, um, Damian Wayne, Robin. Um, when they went to Arkham Asylum, I do like that scene. Um, just because I enjoyed seeing like the different animals of the Batman villains got transformed into. Um, I do like how they like. Um, how most of like the comic relief Michelangelo was and how like there's this one part in the movie where like even though Batman says don't touch anything in the final fight Batman says touch every button and Michelangelo goes crazy and that makes Tim 
uh, Damien Raheem Joe saying, man, I always want to do that. <laughs> but what I do like the most about that was when, like, Batman was saying, fuck you guys, go back. Um, 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 like, go return to where you're at, where you're from, because you screw things up at the asylum. I don't need you. You know, I just got you into me and Batman, you guys saved my ass. I don't need you. And I liked how Raphael's kind of, like, talked to Batman, saying, Yeah, I'm usually the one who does the solo act, and that usually gets me in a lot of trouble. But without my brothers, I probably would have been dead. I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to make it out of some of the situations if my brothers didn't come in and save me. So I do like that aspect. And how, like, Raphael taking charge, kind of seeing himself in Batman and Bruce Wayne, and telling Batman, yeah, that's stupid, I can talk from experience, we aren't leaving, you're gonna accept our help. Kyle Bungo, motherfucker. <laughs> so that, that's the, that's the, um, that's the part that I, I, that resonates with me the most, the most. The next one that I, uh, put on, um, on this um um list in the number five spot is the Turtles Forever movie. I this was back before all these studios decided to use the multiverse loosely goosey. Turtles Forever was back in the era when when the multiverse was used. It was a very special event, and uh, the Turtles Forever movie was housed as a like. On like Saturday morning cartoons on network Fox Box for Kids TV us movie finale of the O three Turtles where the O three Turtles and the um, nineteen eighty seven Turtles how team up because the Utrom Shredder the from the Turtles the O three timeline was essentially threatening. To wipe out the entire existence by going back to the Mirage Turtles, the original Turtles, and destroying them. And that movie was good. I enjoyed it. I remember liking it. Um, my only complaint, really, is that, and this is kind of like a two-parter, that one when they went into the 87 Turtles world, the dimension they didn't use the 87 turtles theme song and the fact that they didn't use the, the OG turtles to be in the um, movie and yeah they use the OG turtles in the one the 2012 turtles interact with them but like and you can say like it might be because one the OG turtles voice actors didn't want to come back to do Turtles Forever, or two could be easily be the right issues, which could lead into like why they didn't use the '87 Turtles theme when both Turtle teams went back to the '87 timeline. I that that's my like that's really my only like complaint. Like, sir, when I first saw it, I said that '87 Turtles were a bit too goofy for my taste. Um. And I'll still stand by that. I like after watching the eighty seven cartoon in its entirety, I take a lot of that they were like too goofy criticism back. Um But I still have to say that I even though I understand where they were come from with the 87 Turtles being goofy. I feel like they made the 87 Turtles being a tad bit too goofy. Just a little tad. Just a little tad. I also have that and the other criticism I've had. Which I can understand if it was the right issue. Um. I can, um.
I think Charles Forever was a beautifully made movie. My favorite part to, to Charles Forever is when the shredder is explaining the whole multiverse of the turtles, and we get to see the different versions of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I thought that was really cool, which makes like the question of is the 07 Turtles film really like part of the 1987 and sorry the 07 Turtles film really part of the 90s trilogy or is it a separate thing because it was really already confusing enough seeing if the 07 Turtles movie was like actually part of the um 90s trilogy continuity or if it wasn't like it's own in Turtles universe Turtles Forever, I'm sorry, made that whole big, like, that, a bigger question. But a fun question to ask. Anyways, I wonder if Kevin Eastman and Peter Larry can answer that. Anyways. And number six for me is the third Ninja Turtles film that was ever made in 1993. When the Turtles went back in time, um, to essentially have a rescue April from getting trapped in feudal Japan. That movie was the weakest of the three Ninja Turtles films. Um, and I feel like it was the most goofiest of the three. Was I don't mind goofy, but I feel like they relied too much on the uh, goofy side. That a decent plot line. I just wish that they took themselves a tad bit more seriously like the first two Ninja Turtles movies in the trilogy did. This was me. But outside of that, I think the, um, I think the, uh, yeah, I might not like Ninja Turtles 3 as much as I like the first two Ninja Turtles film, but I still would watch Ninja Turtles 3 way before I watched what's on the last of, like, the last, like, watching the number 9 spot for me, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, in number seven, I got, uh, the Michael Bay's, um, Out of the Shadows movie. I, I enjoyed that one more than his first one, which, spoiler alert, the, his first film, Michael Bay's first intro film is in the number eight spot, so... Yeah, Michael Bay's in his films takes the 7th and 8th bit for me. Um, the reason why the second uh, Out of the Shadows film is in 7th place for me is because I enjoy Bebop and Rocksteady. Um, and I do enjoy... Um, I think that what I made the, old, uh, the sick, uh, Out of the Shadows in 7th place for me is the fact that they end the after credit scene. They did this, like, really awesome remake of the 87 cartoon theme. And put a little bit of the Ninja Rap in there. And Big Bob Rock Steady. I really enjoyed Big Bob Rock Steady. Um. The 2016 TMNT team film. It was alright. Um. The reason why it's the second to last spot for me is because they made the foot actual like military soldiers where the second film actually made them ninjas which is also another reason why all of the shadows rank once rank higher for me than uh the 2016 michael bay um film um and then the la um there's not really much for me to tell to explain the Michael Bay films, like, they weren't exactly the worst thing I've seen, but they weren't exactly the best thing I've seen. What is, comes at number nine? Which shouldn't be a surprise to any of y'all with my review. Is Me and Mayhem. Which is the film I was referring to that I will watch, like, Team and T over, the third intro film, live action film that came out in 1993. Way more times than I would see Moon and Mayhem. Because I've seen Moon and Mayhem like twice. 
Um, I think Mutant Mayhem is a good kiss film, but as a Ninja Turtles film, I that that didn't really feel it. Um, the um. I didn't like the fact that the turtles stayed public after the final fight. I didn't. I'm not a fan of the turtles being um. What's the word? Um. Going to high school. Um. I. I. I did enjoy the fact that they wanted to be in the public eye, but I was hoping that even if they were exposed in like some part of the movie, which they did in the final fight, that they will go back to the shadows, and they didn't. Um, sure, I liked the like the little nod to the ninja rap in the movie, and I did like the whole like the whole like uh, Eastman Laird uh, puns um, in the. Um, when they met April, when they were actually talking to April, uh, the light lit up sign said Laird, up onto Peter Laird, and the high school that April went to, which ended up being the turtles were going to, it's called Eastman High. Eastman being Peter, uh, Kevin Eastman. I met Kevin Eastman, he's a cool dude, but I, and I mainly I do like those. I, I like those two puns they made to the co-creators with the turtles. I like that. And I also enjoyed, admittedly, the Shredder tease that we got towards the end of the movie. Um, how Cynthia Utram said, bring in the Shredder, and we get this badass scene of the Shredder's backside. Like... I I enjoyed that bit, but like as like a whole like movie, like again, it's a good kiss movie. I'm not going to like deny Seth Rogen that it's a good kiss movie. Uh, Seth Rogen, when he's not like hyped out on his bull, he can make a good kiss movie, and Mirror Mayhem is an example of that. He can make a good kiss film. But, in, like I said, in this case, Mila Mayhem, as an intro film, sucks ass as an intro film. And I will die gladly on that hill. Um. What am I, uh, what else am I? Um. I felt like I was going to say one more thing. No, I'm going to say one more thing. So that was like it. That Mutant Mayhem was a good, very good kiss film. But it doesn't like... But as an intro film, it sucks ass. It does. And, um... It will not age well with the amount of current pop culture points that I had. And you can say, make the effort, uh, make the argument saying... Every Ninja film that we that's probably on the list right now has made some sort of pop culture reference that that um, to their time, and I won't argue with you on that. Each Ninja film had pop culture references to their time when they came out, but not as many as Mutant Mayhem. Even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three, who I was saying that was the goofiest of the three Ninja films of the nineties. I feel like that has even aged better. And like what the... By the time I'm recording this, 30 years since it has been released. Because I'm recording this on December 28th of 2023. Which I'm very dis... Like... And that's the thing. That's the thing. Since like 2023, we released like... um, Nightmare Before Christmas... On um, theaters for a series anniversary, same with Jurassic Park. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three, even though I have said that that's like the debatably the worst of the nineties trilogy, 
I would gladly go see that in theaters again before I even go see Ninja Strolls Me and Mayhem in theaters. Because even though TMNT 3 has, is the weakest link of the original, original Ninja Strolls film uh, trilogy, it has, still has redeeming values for me than it um, qualities, redeeming qualities that in, um, me and Mayhem has for me to go see it. Was the only redeeming values me and Mayhem has for me is um, the puns to the co creators of the Turtles. That's it. Outside of that, no. Just no. Um, so, with that said, that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. That's my rank. Um, again, I'll go, I'll refresh the, your memories with my ranking of them. Like, what's the greatest to least greatest in its show films? Number one, Secret of the Ooze. Number two, the 90s film. Three, the 07 film. Four, the uh, ba Batman vs. the Ninja Turtles. Even if you can't, because that's half an intro film, in my opinion. Um, five, Turtles Forever. Six, uh, the third, uh, 1993 film, then Team and T3. Two, or seven, sorry, uh, the Out of the Shadows, Michael Bay intro film. The, um, eighth, the first Michael Bay intro film. And last, Mio Mayhem. And I do hope that Mio Mayhem, too, whatever it's called, will be significantly better than Mutant Mayhem. And that I, as an intro fan, can enjoy it. And I'm not bashing any of you guys who are enjoy it. If you guys enjoy Mutant Mayhem, more power to you. But that's just my link, rank. But what is your guys' intro rank? Let me know in the uh, comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Be kind to one another. I will catch you, fellow mutants, later.